So when it comes to collecting, I think it's good to have some clear goals in mind. Um, Craig, do you have any advice for people setting their 2022 collecting goals? Uh, yeah, so the main thing would be not to be uh, too overzealous or ambitious. Uh, it's easy to either burn yourself out or get disappointed if you go into be like, all right, in 2022, I'm going to complete a Sega Saturn set and I have no Saturn games or anything <laughs> crazy like that. Like, you want to try to be more realistic. Like, you want to set goals that are more like, I want to start a Sega Saturn collection or work towards a full Sega Saturn set. But if you're giving yourself an end date on something, you're going to be pressured to do more than you probably can, uh, either in terms of the time investment or the money. So I'd say don't go for absolutes ever, just go towards working towards a goal, if that makes sense. Like, you're not going to go for a PS4 set or a PS3 set, you're going to work on the PS4 or PS3 set. That's usually mm -hmm. my uh, my main advice for people that uh, want to go crazy on something like that. Yeah, and we can have a whole episode on set collecting, I think oh, yeah. that would be good. <laughs> Especially since we have a uh, multi-set expert on the show. <laughs> Oops. That's you. <laughs> um... <laughs> So I would say it's important to have goals because video games are not cheap, right? No collecting is going to be cheap unless you're collecting rocks or something. Um, and even then, ask uh, yourself, rocks are getting popular. <laughs> <laughs> ask yourself, what do you want to accomplish this year? Um, sets sets are kind of crazy. If you if you want to collect every Genesis game released, you know, start off with a couple maybe a hundred this year or something like whatever your budget will allow for uh like craig's saying think about do you want to collect important games is that something that's interesting to you uh whether it's games that are important to you or games that are historically important um do you want to collect every game from a certain series that's another type of thing that you could be collecting um goals kind of help you stay on track it's easy to get off on a tangent and that's not always a bad thing either um, but, you know, at the end of the year, you might look back and say, wow, I thought I was going to get 100 Genesis games this year. Why did I start collecting, like, all these Sega CD games, for example? <laughs> um, <laughs> you might no, want to yeah, take a break uh, from... Oh, yeah, go for it. No, yeah. No, I was just going to say, I do that, honestly. Uh, I don't... I mean, if you're collecting for just one system, you're going to get bored. I wouldn't suggest that either. Uh, I think it's more fun to mix it up a little bit. Like, I never... I mean, I have, like, all GameCube and stuff. I did not only collect GameCube that whole time. I was also going for N64 and Wii U and 3DS and other things. Like, I was just collecting for everything I like. Uh, a majority of the time and money was going into GameCube. But uh, I think if you're only buying for one system, it can get stale, and that takes out some of the fun of it as well. So uh, I think it's a better idea to mix it up a little bit and uh, not collect for just one thing. Otherwise, the hobby might get a little tiresome completely agree with that that was kind of one of my next points um you might want to take a break from last year's collecting goals if you are bored or if the goal has just become too outrageously expensive um you know those are both valid reasons don't don't make it a chore i feel like i'm kind of making gamecube collecting a chore but <laughs> we won't <laughs> talk about me um like if you were collecting all the pokemon games in 2019 and then 2020 happened you probably shifted your collecting goals a little bit because it got crazy Mm -hmm. um that's just one example and also there's Would no rules no one cares if you don't meet your collecting goals except for you and even then you shouldn't really care it's supposed to be fun i mean you shouldn't let that ruin or make the break the hobby for you like uh i mean i'm going for a vita set and i've been going for a while now but i've been on a pause for that for about seven or eight months i've bought almost no vita games just because they all skyrocketed in price and i was like well i don't feel like spending that kind of money right now <laughs> And uh, I know I've waited, and some games have gone down in price, so I would say the same. So sometimes you might just want to be patient and uh, do what's best for you and your wallet as well. Um, Absolutely. Because the market, I mean, even with the Pokemon games, and Pokemon games, you never know. I mean, I got my complete Ruby for like $120 like two months ago, and that's still like a $200 game-ish, I think. Maybe 250 I don't even know where it's at now. But a lot of stuff like that, uh, the really niche and hardcore fan bases and also the mainstream stuff... Uh, are the things that fluctuate a lot. So that's something where uh, if there's a sudden change that's going to affect the way that you collect, uh, maybe. Maybe just do something different for a little bit and see how the market goes. Because uh, 
everything kind of ebbs and flows, especially right now. Nothing is consistent and nothing makes sense. <laughs> a lot of games that are inexpensive or shouldn't be expensive are expensive. Ask yourself, would you rather have one expensive game or several less expensive games? That's another thing to keep in mind. And there's Ooh. no wrong answers there. You know, it's like people say quality over quantity a lot, but that's not always true. Um, no wrong answers here. No, yeah, whatever you want to do. Um, although I would suggest um, if you are going for full sets, if you can try to get some of the more rare expensive games out of the way, uh, it's better to get those out of the way first because... Most of those games aren't going to go down in price. Uh, as yeah. somebody who knows the GameCube market very well, since that's mainly... Even now, that's why I collect since I go for all the variants. I can tell you, uh, I have a lot of games I bought for 10 15 bucks that are like in the 60 to $70 range now. Or games I bought for 70 that are three or 400 now. So it's better to get the expensive ones out of the way if you can. Um, because those ones usually won't drop in price. If anything, they'll stay the same or they'll go up. So that is how much uh, was your spirits and spells like 30 bucks? Yeah, I got it for I think like 30 or 40. Uh, <laughs> I so, uh, someone on Reddit actually they just re I, I posted my collection at one point when I got a good amount of games. They're like, hey, if you're going for a full set, they're like, you should buy this now because it's really rare and no one knows about it. So I went and bought it, and lo and behold, now that's one of the uh, the big boys on GameCube. So Bought it last night, thanks to my man Tyler. Shout out to him. Uh, bought it last night for a hundred and sixty dollars because it's like, I don't know, top twenty most expensive right now. It's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And it's a terrible game. It's one of the worst games on the GameCube. <laughs> Is it really? Part. Oh my god, it's awful. I tried it just because I was like, oh, it looks kind of cool, you know, like a fun Halloween platformer, but it's trash. It's so bad. It's so bad. <laughs> Last recommendation I have is that you make um, a video game priority list, which is something I'm trying out myself right now. You make an Excel sheet and you keep track of games that you really want to add to your collection and you shift them up or down based on how badly you want them compared to other games. Um, I just love writing things down. It really helps me in life, like whether it's video game related or not. I write down a lot of stuff and, um, you know, if the next game that you really want, like you're your number one prioritized game is only $12, so that's awesome. But uh, if the next one is $120, then you can like figure out your budget and what you need to be saving up for next. Um, something you guys can try out. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same way. I have a list for everything in my life. It's, it's an Excel spreadsheet for every collection, <laughs> everything I just think about. I'm a weirdo like that. I just like having I like having lists. I'm surprised I don't work at like Watch Mojo or something at this point because... That's what I do with a lot of my free time is just make lists of things. <laughs> but uh, um, <laughs> one other thing I was going to say uh, in terms of collecting goals is uh, uh, one thing that I think is good to aim for and a lot of people don't consider is uh, collect what's not popular. If you want to try bulking up the collection, uh, something like Wii or PSP, like some PSP is a bit on the rise now. Uh, a bit of the Metal Jesus effect. Not that it's his fault, but he says he's going for a PSP set, and then a lot of people are interested in PSP. He's like the retro gaming YouTuber, so that kind of happens. So maybe PSP isn't the best example, but something like Wii or even uh, 360 or something. It's like those are games that people collect for, obviously, but not nearly as many people care about it. So if that's a system you like and you want to get a lot of games for, uh, it's not a bad time to go for them because... Wii isn't the hotness, 360 isn't the hotness. Like, PS3, maybe not, but the 360, you don't see a lot of people, even now, all these years later, going for a lot of 360. So there's a lot of good quality games, uh, and a lot of games in general, and they're all fairly cheap. So, and even in terms of more modern stuff, stuff like the Xbox One, uh, I go to a lot of local game stores, and a lot of Xbox One games, on average, they're all like 10 to 15 bucks, because everyone just uses Game Pass. So most people don't buy physical games on uh, Xbox One. So uh, maybe just try to collect away from the mainstream. I don't think that'd be a bad idea either. I think about doing that sometimes just because you can get a lot of good stuff for uh, less competition. <laughs> That's great advice. Um, and you and I do that a lot with the Game Boy Advance. You know, if you do your research on things that are not researched um i'm gonna say past the gamecube <laughs> era you know ps2 yeah. and gamecube and everything prior to that is is all researched and everyone knows what is is uncommon 
um, but if you do your research, you can you can find what's in common and what people are gonna care about in five or ten years, and that's something mm -hmm. I always preach on this channel. Um, Most of the rarest 3DS games are still really cheap, and you can just go on eBay and buy it right now. I have the power to ruin the market, but I don't. I'm not a jerk, <laughs> so I won't do it. <laughs> but there's a lot of stuff. If you just do your research, you'll realize. Oh, nobody has this game. There's one copy on eBay. There hasn't been one sold in like. 10 months kind of thing so doing your own research definitely helps so what if you don't have a disposable income um, if you're watching this video and it's just like I don't know you're not you're not at that point in your life where you can start to spend hundreds on video games every year or whatever um, research requires no money at all get on eBay and just start looking into variants you know you can do this for yourself or you can do it for the community but I find great enjoyment in discovering new variants, and it's totally free. There's nothing oh, stopping you from, from doing that. And even if you don't have that much money to spend, uh, like I said, uh, I know I already said, but the 360, I'm telling you, there's so many good games, and they're all very, very cheap for the most part, except for, like, I think there's maybe five 360 games that are worth more than, like, $50. So <laughs> that's just a great system to collect if you're on a budget, and you're going to get your money's worth because that's a fantastic era of video games very true i need to take that advice myself and start <laughs> looking into 360 <laughs> a lot of good all stuff. right craig what are your collecting goals for 2022 so my goals are i want to work closer towards finishing the vita set i'm at 150 and i think not including limited run it's only around uh like maybe 250-ish, give or take. Uh, with Limited Run, I think it's closer to like 320. There's a lot of Limited Run Vita games. Uh, I'm currently collecting for Limited Run as well, but I might pause on Limited Run and just go for the regular retail stuff. Uh, just because I feel like Limited Run, you can count it, you can not. Because uh, my rule of thumb is if something counts, is if it has a uh, ESRB logo, like printed on the actual game is what I think should be counted towards the set. Um, and a lot of limited run games don't have that. It's actually just on the outside wrap, interestingly enough. So if you open a game, it's most likely not going to have any kind of ESRB rating. Uh, so there's that. Uh, I'm just going to keep chipping away Game Boy Advance because I just love it. Uh, I love all the weird <laughs> stuff you find. There's so many good hidden gems and fun games and weird random games that you'd never know about. So it's just fun to, like, you go on Mercari, you see, you're like, oh, I've never heard of this. And you go on eBay and there's no copies. So you're like, okay, I'll buy this for $10. <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of cool stuff That's like that. Is. Yes. And uh, um, I'm, of course, going to keep working towards my my World Gravity Rush set. If you don't know, I'm a really big Gravity Rush fan. So I'm trying to get, like, every version of every game from every region. I found a Greek copy of the Vita game the other day, <laughs> which is funny because I didn't know that Greek, cop Greek copies of games existed. So uh, <laughs> right. I'm finding something new every week. It's pretty exciting. Uh, but I think those are my main three. Um, I know it's kind of silly, but I like collecting for PS5 too. Because for some reason, a lot of these games are going real cheap already. And there's a lot of good stuff, even if most of it's like enhanced uh, Xbox One and PS4 games. Uh, I just love my PS5. So, uh, but yeah, Vita, Gravity Rush, Game Boy Advance. Those are my three not trying to finish anything just pick up the numbers as much as i can uh, especially since it's hard to find vita locally and i try to avoid ebay for the most part if i can it's just more fun to find stuff in person nice nice mm -hmm. i also wrote three down um this is gonna sound bad but i mean i bought almost 200 gamecube <laughs> games last year and i would like to <laughs> i would like to get 100 in in this year um, it's going to definitely take some work, but if I want to finish the set What's your, in 2023, uh, count out right now? it's like 355, something like that. You're getting so there. If I could do 100 in the next two years, 100 each in the next two years, then I'll be done in 2023. Um, I don't know. That's like, that's like my number one priority at the moment. And then I'm also trying to chip away at important games that really... I guess important historically is is the right term. So mm -hmm. last year I got my my Super Metroid complete in box and my link between the I mean a link to the past and um, lots of good stuff and you know something that I really want to knock out this year is the original Castlevania 
um, complete in box with a circle seal is what I'm going for, and that'd be awesome. Um, yeah. And then other than that, just like your Gravity Rush stuff, I would like to import some more foreign Rayman games. Um, I guess I need to knock out the rest of the North American ones that I'm missing, if there are any. <laughs> oh, the Atari Jaguar. That's that's an annoying one that I don't have. <laughs> the original first um, I may be able to get that one for you, just so you know. Great. I just bought Spirits and so Spells after last recording, night. I could tell you about that. <laughs> <laughs> all right cool cool so is there something out there that you guys would like us to talk about on collective perspective come join the discord there's a link in the description below 